uh, jam 10.58 lagi 2 minit kita akan start so before we start uh, semua orang baca doa sendiri okay. Okay, so today as I was planning untuk habiskan chapter mid-exam break, okay. So I hope we can finish chapter 5 by this week and we boleh terus masuk chapter 6 juga. Okay, so as last week, on Friday, we have learned about self-induction in 5.3, okay. So kita dah belajar macam mana uh, satu solenoid boleh menghasilkan induced current melalui diri dia sendiri, okay. So, kalau kita recap sikit, uh, one solenoid yang connected to power supply dan ada variable resistor, dia boleh menghasilkan dia punya induced current sendiri. How? By changing the resistance. So, bila kita ubah resistance, apa yang akan berubah ialah current juga akan berubah and current as the current is changing the magnetic field will also changing and when the magnetic field is changing menyebabkan magnetic flux akan berubah why because formula for flux is equal to nba cos theta when the flux is changing it will have e induced bila ada e induced baru boleh menghasilkan induced current i induced Okay, itu ialah self-induction. Okay, and we have four formula for self-inductance which is EMF, back EMF over rate of change of current and for coil and flux over current. For solenoid, coil mu n square a over 2r. So this four equation is given in the punya, this off formula. Okay. And as for today, kita akan masuk kepada 5.4 which is energy store in inductor. So, as we know, inductor ialah device. Uh, dia ialah satu benda alat. Okay. So, fungsi dia ialah untuk store energy in term of magnetic field. Okay, maksudnya dia boleh simpan energy dalam bentuk magnetic field. Itu ialah fungsi inductor. So, we want to know the outcome, the new objective 5.4a, how to derive and use the energy store in inductor. Okay, so biasanya kalau kamu punya learning objective, how to use sahaja. Maksudnya, you don't have to derive. Kalau use, formula akan dibagi. But now, dia suruh kamu derivekan formula ini. So, soalan boleh kata, uh, derive the equation for energy store in inductor. Okay, so kita nak derive lah sama-sama hari ni. It is a very simple one. Okay, so this is the shape of inductor. Inductor ni dia macam uh, coil yang ada lot of turning. Macam solenoid. Okay. So dalam ni fungsi dia ialah Okay, so the first function of inductor Okay, kalau function ni biasanya akan tanya dalam soalan UPS atau point paper one. Okay, the first one ialah to control current and the second one to store energy in form of magnetic field macam saya kata. Kita pernah belajar kapasitor. Kapasitor store energy juga tetapi bukan dalam bentuk magnetic field. Okay, dia store energy sahaja. Okay, kalau ini store energy in form of magnetic field. Ada dua function of an inductor. Okay. So now, kita nak derive one by one. It's a very simple one sahaja. So, it said that consider an inductor of inductance L. Sebab sebelum kita dah belajar kalau self-inductance simbolnya ialah L. Suppose that at time T, the current in the inductors is the process of building up to its steady value I at rate the I over the Okay. So, macam yang kita dah tahu from the definition self inductance equals to negative emf di over dt this is the definition of self inductance okay and it said here the magnitude 
Okay, nilai sahaja of the flag EFF is given by E, L, D, I, O, D, T. So dekat equation kita ada negatif. So negatif ini dia indicate direction. Okay, tapi sekarang dia kata the magnitude. So that's why disebabkan dia mention magnitude, we ignore the negative sign. So L is equals to E, D, I over D, T. But we want the EMF. So kalau kita susun balik, our EMF will become EMF is equals to L di over dt. Sampai sini faham? Sampai sini jelas? Faham, madam. Okay. Alright. Suara saya jelas ni kan? Okay. Jelas madam. So that is the first one. The second one dia kata So dia minta power pula Is equal to IV But now we are not using voltage We are using EMF So power is equal to I EMF So this will become our second equation Okay one into two. So apa yang saya akan dapat ialah P is equal to I L D I over D T. Okay. Saya just gantikan EMF ini dengan this equation. Okay. Now Saya nak energy, bukan saya nak power. So what is the relationship between energy and power? So the relationship between energy and power ialah U is equals to DU equals to U is equals to Okay, it's Saya ada kat sini U is equals to PDT Okay so I just pindahkan DT dekat sini Kita akan dapat P DT equals to I L T ke sini Okay tapi DU is equals to PDT. So I just gantikan dekat sini PDT is equals to DU I L DI. Okay. Saya nak U. Saya bukan nak DU. So what should I do ialah saya perlu integratekan dia. So I need to integrate 1 from 0 to U DU then integratekan Sebab I K okay, integrate 1 in term of D. D I saya akan dapat. Anyone? Integrate I in term of D I. So, I square over 2. I square over 2. Then integrate L in term of the I tak boleh integrate sebab dia bukan in term of kita akan dapat L balik. So that's why kita akan dapat U. Saya pindahkan ke sini. U is equals to 1 over 2 L I square. And this is the equation for energy torque in the capacitor. Where U is the energy start, half ialah number, L ialah self-inductance, then I square ialah current. And the unit for energy always joule. Okay. So it is very simple derivation. Um, saya harap kamu jelas. Okay. Now, 
the total energy stored in the inductor U as the current increase from 0 to I can be found by integrating the equation. So, kita akan dapat U equals to half at I square. Dan, kalau kita who solenoid, L ni ialah mu naught n square A of L. Ini L untuk solenoid. Tapi kalau saya nak energy store in a solenoid, saya just gantikan half L I square ni dengan ini. So, kita tahu U is equal to half L dapat mu naught n square A over L times I square. Maka terdapatlah equation yang bawah ini. So, do you need to memorize this equation? No. Okay. Do you need to understand how to derive? It is yes. Sebab soalan boleh tanya derivation. Okay. So, itu ialah energy stored in an inductor. Okay. Ada soalan tak? Ada soalan? Oh, madam. Ya, ada. Okey. So, kalau soalan tanya, energy stored in a coil. So, kalau coil, tahu L untuk coil ialah mu naught n square A over 2R. So, you just gantikan lah. U equals to 1 over 2. Mu naught n square A over 2R times dengan I square. Okey. It is the same one. Okey. Now, we go to the example 14. Okey. Okey. Uh, 25 centimeter. So now we have the length 25 centimeter with an air core consists of 109 meter of 2.7 centimeter. Calculate the self inductance of the solenoid and the energy stored in the solenoid if the current flow in it is 1.6 ampere given mu naught. Okay. So we have all the info here. The first one we have the length 25 5 cm, like I always say, always terus tukarkan kepada SI unit, 0.25 meter. We have the A, calculate the self-inductance of the solenoid. So, how we should do this example. So, A Dia minta self-inductance sama dengan berapa. Okay. It is a solenoid. So, how many equation untuk self-inductance of the solenoid? So, ada di over dt. Also, you can use n flux over i. Also, you can use mu naught n square a over l. So, which one yang kita boleh gunakan dekat sini? One, two, three. Which one? Three. Three. Okay. Someone said three. Do we have mu naught? Yes, we do have mu naught. And kita ada N. A. Kita ada diameter. So we can find the area. And L are given yes. Good. We are using number 3. So number 3, we have the mu naught 4 pi exponent negative 7. N is 100 square. Area. Area, we need to find the area first. So A is equals to pi d square over 4. So can you calculate the area for me? Five point seven two five times ten to the power of negative four. Negative four meter square. All right. Okay. So area satu jenis nak bagi tips dekat kamu. Area is not the final answer yet. So if it's not the final answer yet, kita tak boleh bagi two decimal places. We need to give three to four decimal places. Supaya jawapan akhir kamu tak lari. So dia ialah five point seven two. 
five, six. Bank 0.25. So what is the sum in that term? Dapat set finite terms kita. Two point eight eight mm -hmm. times exponent negative five. Tell me them. Negative five. Unit ya. Hand rate. Alright, great. So this is the value for the set finite terms, and we start in the solenoid. So the energy star in the solenoid given the current is 1.6 U equals to half L I square So 1 over 2 L kita dah kira tadi I is 1.6 square So berapa kita punya energy star? You get the same answer as mine, 3.69 exponent negative 6 joule. Negative 5. Man. Negative 5. Negative 5, madam. Negative 5. Negative 5 joule. Ni betul kan? Betul, madam. Okay, so thank you. This is for example 14 and um, example 15, the okay, what's like you? So a cost of inductance 350 micro Henry carries a current of 1.2 ampere. So we have Henry and we have the current is 1.2 ampere. So the first one, it asks us the amount of energy in the, in the coil. So straightforward, U is equals to half Li square, 1 over 2, 350 exponent negative 6 times 1.2 square. Okay, what is the problem? So bila student terlalu rasa soalan tu straightforward, what will happen is mereka akan lupa untuk squarekan the current. So kalau waktu saya jaga exam, benda ni yang macam sakit hati saya nak tengok. Sebab you are using the right formula. Tetapi apa yang salah ialah bila kamu masuk nilai. Okay, sebab so you are very happy the soalan ni straightforward dan kamu sampai terlupa nak squarekan dia. Dan menyebabkan kamu tak dapat jawapan yang betul. Okay, so don't forget to square the current. So you will get 2.52 exponent negative 4 unit for energy is joule. You get the same answer as mine. Yes, madam. Yes, good. Okay, and number two, the current in the coil is reduced to zero in eight meter per second. What is the induced EMF across the coil? So we know that the current I over dt because the current is changing. Okay. So the time given is equals to 8 exponent negative 3 second because it is millisecond. Ini bukan velocity. Okay, selalu ada kata, student kata medium. Dia ada tertinggal negative 1 ke dekat atas ni. Sebab dia kata ini mungkin speed ataupun velocity ms negative 1. No, 
it is a time. Cuma dalam prefix millisecond. So, dia bukanlah velocity, dia ialah time. A exponent negative 3 second. Okay. Soalan minta EMF sama dengan berapa. Okay. So, we know that E in use is equal to L di over dt. Negative L di over dt. Okay. So, L dah ada which is negative 350 exponent negative 6 di over dt which is I final tolak I initial bahagi dengan sign. So, I final saya ialah 0. Okay. 0 minus dengan 1.2 divided by 8 exponent negative 3. So, what is the E induced yang kita dapat? Berapa? Zero point zero five two five. Zero point zero five two five, and the unit is. Okay, or you can give you punya answer dalam exponential, which is fifty two point. So that's for 5.4 and this story. Yeah, the medium. Okay, so before we masuk 5.5, uh, kita isi attendance dulu. yang ada kat kelas hari ini saya nak bagi briefing sikit untuk soalan assignment sebelum masuk 5.5 ok soalan assignment kamu you need to submit sebelum eh on 4 hari bulan 3 which is hari Jumaat ini ok so the best thing is kamu submit dekat google classroom you punya assignment yang kamu dah tulis hari tu yang draft yang saya dah check which is adalah uh, Tu kelas akan ada dua orang je yang hantar dan orang yang sama juga yang respon dekat siapa yang Google Meet. It is always the same person yang yang buat kerja. Okay. So apa yang kamu perlu hantar bersama ialah this is the front page buku surat yang pertama dekat soalan kamu berserta buku surat yang kedua. So student declaration. Okay. So dekat front page ni nama kamu, nombor metrik kamu, kelas kamu dan nama pensyarah. Nama pesyarah ni nama penuh saya lah. Jangan nak tulis pesyarah Mimi je. Write my full name together dengan nama ayah saya sekali. Okay. Sama juga dekat sini. Name, metric number. Tanda tangan kamu, nama kamu dan tarikh ini ialah pada empat hari bulan tiga. Tarikh yang kamu hantar. Okay. So tarikh ialah 4th March 2022. Okay. Dan soalan ni tak payah hantar. You tak payah print out pun soalan ni. You print out yang dua surat depan saja. Soalan tak perlu hantar. Hantar je terus kamu pun jawapan. 
Okay, supaya tak membazir. So you need to print out satu dan dua sahaja. Okay, itu untuk assignment. Ada lagi soalan untuk assignment? So kalau tak ada, boleh saya proceed dengan 5.5? Boleh Madam. Boleh Madam. Boleh Madam. Okay, thank you for the response. Okay, so 5.5 ialah macam saya mention sebelum ni. Kalau kamu faham 5.3 staff inductance, you will have no problem dengan mutual inductance. Okay, mutual inductance ni ni. Okay, so what is mutual inductance? Learning objective 5.5a. You need to define mutual inductance. Learning objective 5.5b, use mutual inductance between two coaxial solenoid. Okay, so do it sahaja. You don't have to derive anything. Okay, so what is mutual inductance? Okay, so in, in this EMF, in a circuit is by changing current in another nearby circuit. So it will like Mutual inductance. EMF induced in a circuit by exchanging current in another circuit nearby. So maksudnya ada dua circuit. Circuit kedua ni tak ada power supply. Dia ada galvanometer sahaja. So apa fungsi galvanometer nak baca current? Okay. So dia tak ada power supply tetapi ada current. Macam mana boleh ada current? Sebab ada induced EMF. Macam mana boleh ada induced EMF? Sebab ada perubahan current dekat circuit yang sebelah dia. Okay, so itu ialah mutual inductance. Okay, so according to Faraday's law, EMF is induced in loop 2 to oppose the change The induced current in loop that caused by the change of current in neighboring loop is called as mutual inductance or in Malay arohan and saling. So yang ni agak susah untuk kamu faham. I will explain one by one. Okay. For example, refer to the following loop 1 and loop 2. It's not loop, it's the solenoid. Solenoid 1 and solenoid 2. Okay. EMF induced in coil 2 by changing current in coil 1. Macam mana dia jadi? Okay. You have two cores or two solenoid placed side by side partially. Coil 1 is connected to a source. Okay, coil 1 ini dia ada power supply. Okay, of battery. Coil 2 is connected to a galvanometer. So galvanometer dia bukan bagi supply. Dia hanya read current. Dia hanya uh, baca current. So kalau tak ada current, tak bergerak lah. Okay, dan dia tak, mem dia tak bagi current pun. Okay, okay. When current start to flow in coil 1, Sebab coil 1 ni ada current flow sebab dia ada power supply. Okay, daripada positif pergi ke negatif. Okay, so ada current flow. When the current start flow in coil 1, magnetic flux will begin to build up inside the coil. So bila ada current flow, sebabkan dia ialah CCC akan menghasilkan magnetic field. Di sekeliling solenoid tersebut. Okay, so bila ada magnetic field, maka akan ada magnetic flux. Okay. Ada current daripada power supply menghasilkan magnetic field yang hijau ni. Okay. So bila ada magnetic field, dia akan menghasilkan magnetic flux sebab equation untuk flux ialah NBA cos theta. Okay. Since coil 2 is placed nearby to coil 1, Thus, this magnetic flux will also pass through coil 2. Disebabkan coil yang kedua ini duduk sebelah coil yang pertama, magnetic flux ini juga akan termasuk ke dalam magnetic uh, coil yang kedua. Okay. Okay. So, disebabkan duduk sebelah, magnetic flux will also pass through coil 2. Menyebabkan coil 2 juga akan ada magnetic flux. Sebab Dia juga ada NBA cos theta. Okay. If the current in coil 1 is changed with the time, magnetic flux through coil 2 will change with time 2. 
According to Faraday's law, COI2 will experience an induced EMF. The production of induced EMF in COI2 caused by a change in current in a neighboring COI is known as mutual inductance. Ha, faham ke tidak? Faham ke tak? Uh. Tak. Tidak, madam. Kurang faham. Tidak. Tak, okay. So, macam ni. Kita nak ada I induce dekat coil yang pertama dan coil yang kedua. So, ada coil satu. Ada coil dua. Tapi coil satu, dia boleh ada current sebab dia ada bateri. Coil yang kedua takkan ada current sebab dia hanya ada galvanometer. Tapi macam mana saya nak hasilkan current juga dalam coil yang kedua. Okay. So, coil yang pertama macam self induction bila dia ada bateri positif, negatif akan ada current flow. From positive terminal of the battery pergi ke negative terminal of the battery. So, akan ada current flow disebabkan oleh bateri. Tapi itu bukan induced current. Okay, so bila ada current flow akan menghasilkan magnetic field sebab current lalu dekat solenoid. So dekat sekeliling solenoid ini akan ada magnetic field. Faham? Faham madam. Okay, so ada magnetic field. Okay, bila ada magnetic field, akan ada magnetic flux. Okay, sebab flux is equal to N, B, A, cos theta. Okay, tapi belum ada I induce lagi. Okay, so dekat yang pertama, dia ada flux. So ini ialah flux yang pertama, N pertama, B pertama, A pertama. Okay, dekat yang kedua ni, yang kedua, dia tak ada current sebab dia tak ada bateri. Tapi, adakah dia akan ada B? Dekat yang kedua. Ada, madam. Ada. Kenapa dia boleh ada B? Sebab dia duduk sebelah yang pertama. Pertama tadi dia dah ada B daripada current dia. Tapi sebab dia duduk sebelah, magnetic field ni sangat luas. So yang kedua juga akan experience B daripada yang pertama. Okay. Dan bila dia ada B, dia akan ada flux yang kedua which is N yang kedua, B yang pertama, area yang kedua, cos theta. Dia tak ada B dia sendiri sebab dia tak ada bateri. Tapi dia ada B yang dia experience daripada orang sebelah ni. Okay. So faham? Faham Madam. Okay dekat sini. Ah uh, Madam. Kita punya galvanometer ni dah deflect ataupun belum? Galvanometer saya ni dah Bergerak ataupun belum? Up until here. Belum. Belum. Ya, yeah, good. Belum. Sebab belum ada current. Dia hanya ada magnetic field sahaja. Okay, good. Now, macam mana saya nak hasilkan induced current? Macam yang terjadi dekat... Change the resistor. Yes, very good. We need to change the variable resistor. So, saya ubah variable resistor saya. Contoh, saya increase 10 variable resistor saya. So, what will happen to current? Current will decrease. Saya ulang lagi sebab V is equals to IR dan I is inversely proportional with resistor. Okay. So I berkurang. So bila I berkurang, B akan berkurang. Akan ada perubahan flux. So bila ada perubahan flux akan menghasilkan E induce. Bila ada E induce akan ada I induce. Ini untuk call uh, solenoid yang pertama. Adakah perubahan resistor ini menyebabkan perubahan dekat sebelah ini?
Yes or no? Sorry, what's the question again, madam? Sorry? What's the question again, madam? Adakah perubahan resistor dekat solenak yang pertama menyebabkan perubahan dekat solenak yang kedua? Yes, madam. Yes, sebab yang kedua, yes, very good. It is yes, sebab B yang kedua ini, B dekat yang solenak kedua, dia ialah B daripada yang pertama. So, bila R dekat sini berkurang, I dekat sini berkurang. So, B yang masuk ke dalam yang kedua ni juga akan berkurang. So, bila yang B satu yang masuk dekat dalam solenak kedua ini berkurang, akan ada perubahan flux. So, bila ada perubahan flux, akan menghasilkan E induce yang kedua dan akan menghasilkan I induce yang kedua. Okay, so bila ada I induce, waktu ni barulah kita punya galvanometer akan bergerak. Sebab dah ada induce current. Okay, induce current dekat kedua ni disebabkan oleh perubahan dekat yang pertama. Bukan perubahan dekat diri dia sendiri. So, this process we call as a mutual inductance. Boleh faham? Faham, Madam. Boleh, Madam. Yes. So, kalau kamu faham, okay. So, solenak pertama, dia experience dua inductance. Dia experience self-inductance dan dia juga experience mutual inductance. Solenak yang kedua, dia hanya experience mutual inductance daripada solenak yang pertama. So, itu ialah konsep mutual inductance. Faham? Faham, Madam. Faham. Okay, good. Okay. Now, dia punya uh, explanation. In mutual inductance, induced in one coil is proportional to the rate at which the current in at the coil is changing. Maksudnya, E induced equals to DI over DT. E induced berapa? E induced yang kedua. Okay, yang kedua tu diterhasil disebabkan oleh perubahan dekat yang pertama. If we assume that the current in coil 1 change at a rate of di1 over dt1, then the flux will change by the flux over dt. And this change is experienced by coil 2. So, uh, this one ialah apa yang saya explain tadi. Coil 2 experience mutual disebabkan experience uh, I induced disebabkan oleh solenak yang pertama. Okay. So, the induced MF in coil 2 equationnya ialah E2 negative M I2 di I1 over DT. Kenapa I1? Okay. Sebab E induced dekat yang kedua disebabkan oleh perubahan dekat coil yang pertama. Bukan perubahan current dekat coil yang kedua. So, itu yang kamu kena bear in mind. M12 is mutual inductance of coil 2 with respect to coil 1. Negative sign is an expression of Lenz law indicating that the induced current opposes the change in that one. So according to Faraday's law, EMF induced in second part is this equation. Okay, so E2 equals to, ada dua formula, N deflux over dt, then M di over dt. Okay, keep in mind, EMF induced in coil 2 is due to the current change in coil 1. Sebab bila current change in coil 1 menyebabkan B berubah, bila B berubah barulah menghasilkan change in flux. Bila tak ada change in flux, akan hasilkan E induced dan I induced. Right? The same thing juga combining these two equation, you don't have to know the um, derivation and you only need to know the equation M12 is equals to N2 flux to I1. Tengok ni, apa yang berbeza ialah current je. Sebab current disebabkan oleh perubahan orang sebelah. Bukan diri dia sendiri. Same goes to M21. So M21, 1, 1, ini 2. Sebab current 2 yang berubah. Bukan current 1. Okay. For a given pair of coils, the value of mutual inductance is same. And does not depends on which coil carries the current and which coil experience the induction. Macam saya kata tadi, kamu ada dua coil. Coil 1 dan coil 2. Dua-dua coil experience mutual inductance. 
So nilai M12 dan M21 nilai dia sama. So you don't have to worry kalau kamu dah kira satu dekat sini, M dia berapa? So nilai M yang dekat dua ni pun juga sama. Okay. So disebabkan mutual inductance dia ialah inductance, unitnya ialah Henry. Kalau sel inductance simbolnya ialah L. Kalau mutual inductance simbolnya ialah M. Dan kedua-dua ni unitnya ialah Henry. Okay. Sampai sini ada soalan Ada soalan Lain saya putus saya ke? Ada soalan ke? Tidak, tidak Tidak, alright So sikit lagi And you have to know how to use Mutual inductance for two coaxial solenoids Okay, so what is mean by coaxial? Dia ialah yang bertindih, berlilit. You have two wire yang dia lilit antara satu sama lain. Dia bukan duduk sebelah. So ini juga you have to know kalau soalan mention two coaxial solenoids, you ada wire yang pertama dengan wire yang kedua. Okay, the equation will become M12 is equal to mu naught and 1 and 2 a over L. Okay, and this equation is given in the list of formula. Alright. Okay, so this one you don't have to worry. N1 ialah primary, N2 ialah secondary. So biasa primary ini wire yang dia connect to power supply. Secondary ini ialah wire yang uh, ada galvanometer. Okay. And we go to example, the last example, example 16. Okay, the primary coil of a solenoid of radius 2 cm has 500 turns and length of 24 cm. If the secondary coil with 80 turns surrounds the primary coil at its center, calculate the mutual inductance of the coils B, the magnitude of induced MF in secondary coil if the current in primary coil change at the rate of 4.8 ampere per second. Okay, so kalau example 16 ni, adakah kita punya wire duduk bersebelahan ataupun coaxial? Duduk bersebelahan ke coaxial? Caution. So, where is the keyword yang dia caution? Secondary. You are the primary, secondary and dia kata the primary coil at its center. Okay. So, dia kata the secondary coil surrounds the primary coil at the center. Maksudnya dia bertindih. Okay. So, dia ialah caution. Alright, so we have the info, we have the primary coil R ialah 0 0.02 meter, R1, N1, and we have L1. Okay, and we have N2 is 8 meters. So find the mutual inductance, disebabkan dia coaxial. The equation is M equals to mu naught N1 and to A over L. Okay. So we have mu naught 4 pi exponent negative 7 and 1 is 500 and 2 is 80. Area. I don't have area here. So area we are calculating by using pi R square because they bagi radius. So pi R is 0 0.02 square. So can you calculate the area for me? One, two, six, negative three. Sorry. Yeah, I think not. One point two six. 
it is still not the, the final answer yet so kita tak boleh ambil itu dari 5 5, 6 yes good exponent 8 3 meter square thank you Roderick so 1.2566 exponent negative 3 divided by the length which is 0.24 okay, so berapakah kita punya mutual inductance Dapat? 2.63 eksponen negatif 4. 2.63. And unitnya ialah Henry. Okay. And B, the magnitude of in DMF. So, dia minta magnitude. So, kalau magnitude, you tak perlu letak dia punya negative sign. Okay. So, dia bagi di over dt. Okay, this one A, this one B. Dia minta EMF sama dengan berapa. So, we already have into kita ada mutual inductance and we have di over dt di1 over dt equal to 4.8 ampere per second. Macam mana saya tahu dia ialah I1 Sebab dekat soalan ini kita guna all the info from primary coil. Sebab so, kita guna L1, N1 and A1. Okay. So kita tahu the equation yang ada ialah induced EMF2 is equal to mutual inductance DI1 over DT. So mutual inductance kita dah kira tadi 2.63 exponent negative 4 and the I over the is 4.8 so berapakah nilai ini CMF dekat coil yang kedua one point two six three okay one point two six exponent negative three unit for EMF ialah right and dia minta magnitude sahaja so you don't have to give the direction dan dia memang the direction maksud magnitude tadi sebab Ini ada negatif sepatutnya dekat sini. Dekat sini sepatutnya ada negatif. Sorry. Tapi sebabkan dia minta magnitude, we ignore the negative one. Negative sign dekat sini. Okay. So that's for the last example in chapter 5. Ada soalan? Tak ada, madam. Tak ada. So, jelas chapter 5. Jelas. Jelas. Alright. So, chapter 5 we have finished. So, uh, on Wednesday, I have to start recording it.